All right, now let's look at the samples code, the solution of the exercise number three. And uh, this has to do with the interfaces. So as we said, we would define an interface. Let's make some space here. You see again, uh, even on the left, if we do local interfaces, they are discovered here by the tool and you can see what's inside even. It shows you which methods are inside and everything, but we will look at the source code. So let's keep our eyes on here. Um, so we see that we have the interface defined as we said it earlier. We have the methods with refuel drive distance and good current tank level, basically by just moving the methods from the class to here. And then we have the car definition still create private, which means we still keep the get instance method. And um, we have the interfaces statement that implements now, it says it implement one interface LIF vehicle. So this kind of almost, you can say, includes the things that are defined here at this point in the public section. But it allows you to talk to these elements in here with an interface uh, reference of LIF vehicle. And so the private section is the same, that nothing changes here. In the implementation, the get instance is the same. What's interesting is just that here the implementation of the uh, methods uh, has not changed, but just the name. So here we see that we put, because it's now an interface implementation, LIF vehicle, tilde refuel. And um, that way we know that this method belongs to an uh, interface. So you could actually have a refuel method on the class. And if you later uh, add an interface that happens to have also a refuel method, you would keep them separate this way in the implementation. And of course, also outside um, in for the user perspective. And the same here and the same here. The code itself has not changed. What's interesting is now the client code. And of course, first of all, truck, we wanted to have another class, right? So that to show the polymorphism because we want to look at different types of objects, the car and the truck in the same way. So we have a truck, also implements interface vehicle and uh, the data here again. And basically the truck is all the same, except it doesn't have a get instance method. So it's simpler. It just does the pure um, create object statement directly. And this, you don't need this, but to you denote it's clearly create public means, yes, we want to create to be public. So we'll just create those objects with create object. And um, the trucks are also a little simpler because the constructor has no arguments. Um, it just puts some fixed values, the truck class is, in, is overall a little simpler. So that is all defined here, very similar code. And now look at the main program. So first of all, we have a table, a table here of interface references, just a table of references. So no name and uh, reference together or something, just a table of references, vehicles to refuel, type standard table of now reference table to uh, LIF vehicle. So I, and here I have only references to this interface type and a single individual variable vehicle to refuel also of this type. Now I create some instances. I create a VW Golf here. That's the only car I uh, create uh, of the, uh, the cars. And I append this vehicle to refuel that I have here as a target reference in the value to the table. So I kind of use this vehicle to refuel um, just to um, as basically as a variable which all the creates go into so I immediately can add them to the table. Now I create uh, a truck and I do this again I, I specify the create object vehicle to refuel. I, I use the interface method uh, I'm sorry the interface variable right away here and but I specify the type of the um, class to be created of course and so he creates an instance of this puts the reference variable here and again I add the append the variable the vehicle to refuel, so the content of that to the table. And now I have a table with two rows. It's a small table, but it shows uh, it's enough to show the principle. I loop at the table again into this single variable again. And now I can call from this variable vehicle to refuel, refuel method. And some at first it will be the golf, the second it will be the truck. And I don't have to know here. So I can write a generic program that talks to different kinds of objects in a generic way using this interface. And so I have an assertion here also, after refuel, I want to make sure it's 100%. This really is the key here of this uh, exercise and what's important. And so if you think about it logically, 
what we're doing here is that we have a loop over whatever kind of collection and we can talk to different types of objects in a uniform way because we have we look at it through the interface and this is a very powerful and important concept so if we look at this graphically in the way of the notation that we have defined earlier um, we see there is an interface here LIF vehicle and, and this is denoted in this way in UML this is an interface this is not a real class we have the methods defined here and now we see this little triangle here with and car and truck so this means that the class car and the class truck both implement this interface and so you see the attributes and um, the methods here with some you know we don't show everything so this is maybe a, a little more graphical presentation of what the code is that we just looked at there's some important aspects I still want, I want to discuss so after you've seen the example I think it's better it's uh, easier to understand these points here I mentioned already that uh, what interfaces allow you to do is to have a generic access to different kinds of objects from frameworks. So you can sp have a, an archive manager, you can have a persistence manager, you can have whatever uh, generic services that talk to different objects in a generic way. And if a class wants to participate in the service, they need to implement the client interface of this service, and then they can be called by them. So depending on who calls who, that may be a little different. But basically, um, as an example, if you are a class and you want to be um, archivable, you need to implement the archiving interface. And if you do it correctly and register somewhere, um, basically then you are archived. So you can basically add a feature to a whole bunch of classes in a uniform way this way. Um, you may wonder at this point, how, what if I have an if the implementation of the um, methods is even almost always the same? So what you can do there is that the implementation of a uh, method, of course, you have to first specify in the class, but from there you can immediately delegate the implementation to something else. So this is how you can reuse code and, for instance, have a if you have five methods uh, that need to be implemented in the class. Uh, you can have and then three can be shared in some smart way and of course you can just specify that that way and reuse implementation code uh, the second use case which is very important is decouple implementation from interface what this means is let's assume you have a class that implements an algorithm optimize whatever and so you have you have an idea on how to do this and so you wrote this optimizer and the interface of this class, I'm sorry, the, well, the, the interface of the class means whatever is defined in the public section really um, defines what you can do with it, right? And now you have a better idea and you want to add another algorithm and maybe another one for different cases that are faster in certain cases and so forth. So what you need to do now to be able to do this is really what you want to say, um, which case do I have? I want to replace maybe at runtime uh, the implementation of the optimizer from this class A to class B but I don't want to change all the code and everybody who's talking to the optimizer so the simplest thing to do is you look at the class you take the whatever is in the public section put that into an interface let the class implement the interface and access from everywhere this class only through the interface that is a good general pattern good practice so uh, your central objects you want to um, to work with that basically for each class you have an interface that contains the public section of the class and you only use this class indirectly uh, through the interface that allows to um, change each implementation of the interface so to speak this implementing class without changing any of the other client code so it's also very powerful pattern and usage of interface and the third use case is something that um, you can have decoupling during de development so for instance if you use or you want to call a class that is built by another developer or team but it's not there yet and um, you can have an interface that you agree on okay this is how we're going to call each other but the implementation is not there and I can stub it out so I can have an interface and I can have a very simple class that pretends to behave like the component I'm trying to call 
but it will just behave really stupid. So I can, for instance, I have to have a pricing engine call, and but it, it returns always the same price. It's enough for me. Um, but I cannot, it means in my tests and in my development, I don't have to depend on the real full-fledged pricing engine to be there. And this is something that is called test isolation, which is a very important part also in the uh, ASE techniques uh, in the uh, test-driven development context. So we'll learn a lot about that in the ASE course as well. So this way you decouple different development groups or development uh, tasks um, by using an interface and, and if uh, putting a test double class in between if you need to. So this concludes the section of interfaces. It's very important and it will be used a lot. It's very simple but very powerful abstraction mechanism.